mentioned doulas in your explanations. You've mentioned midwives. But I'm not sure if everybody knows the definition or the responsibilities of a midwife or a doula. Um, if you don't mind, could you go into that? Um, you know, what are the roles of a doula? What are the roles of a midwife? How are they different? How are they similar? Um, yeah, because just leading up to this interview, um, you know, I'm talking to family, talking to friends, you know, doulas, midwives, people are like, huh? Yeah. So, um, especially within the black community, um, if, if anybody knows about doulas or midwives, it's in the black community, but outside of the black community, it might be a little, um, so, so um, doulas, we are non-clinical support people, okay. meaning we are not prescribing medication. Um, we are not subscribing any ailments or anything that's going on with them. That is left up to their medical provider. And I really want to stress that because I think a lot of times when people are um, referencing um, doula support to their friends or loved ones, that's where the confusion kicks in. So we are non-clinical support people. We have clinical knowledge and understanding to guide and navigate our clients through um, their prenatal and postpartal journey, but we are not responsible for the medical care or the medical outcomes of that birthing individual. So our support is um, informational. So we provide them with resources to make informed decisions about their care. Um, so that could be childbirth education, that could be any type of evidence-based articles or referring them to um, evidence-based practitioner for more higher level support. Um, we provide them with emotional support because uh, pregnancy is very hard and postpartum is very hard on the body. Um, so if you're thinking about how you're, that person is going through a lot of hormonal changes, and let's just say that person doesn't have adequate support at home or adequate support in the community, it can be very um, hard on the body to go through pregnancy and not have people to turn to. Um, and so we are there with an unbiased ear. Uh, this is a judgment-free um, practice that we support people. We're also there physically. So when someone's having birth, the worst thing for us is to see someone laying on their backs giving birth because we know it's gonna be a difficult labor. And that type of position was designed by men. And so for us, we're like, nope, we're going to get up. We're going to walk around. We're going to do some squats. We got to get this baby down. Um, and this can be done whether the person is having a vaginal birth, um, whether they have an epidural and they're stationed to the bed, we're still going to move them while they're in the bed. But this can also be done, you know, with providing the emotional and physical support during a C-section because I've been with families who've had to have C-sections for medical reasons. Um, and then we are also just there just to be... Um, resource navigators. Um, in my work, when my clients are having um, high level medical concerns about things that they felt like their providers weren't able to give them the answer to, um, I utilize my network of practitioners and providers that can help them discern the information so that way they can make an informed decision about their care. Because again, we've been a lot of times conditioned that we don't have any other options. So people don't think that you can transfer a medical practice within the midst of your pregnancy. People don't know if you don't like this hospital while you're in labor, you can go to another hospital. Oh wow! So people that. have choice. And so that's the biggest thing is for us to empower people, but also to really empower and support the families. Because a lot of times the partners are and the support people are forgotten about. They need just as much as education as the person that is giving birth because they're the ones that are going to be in the home supporting that person. Um, and I love when I see um, family members participate in the meetings so that way they're just equally prepared to be there in a nurturing way. And I always want to make sure that our um, family support people know how to support the person based off of their needs and desires, based off of what they want to do. With a midwife, there are different types of midwives. Um, there's a traditional midwives who just been in the communities for years practicing births. That would be no different than a traditional midwife in a developed nation who's been attending births for years. They just don't have uh, a, a an accredited certification, right? Um, then there are 
uh, certified professional midwives. These are midwives who've gone through midwifery school and midwifery training, but they are not at the higher clinical level of a certified nurse midwife. And then there's certified nurse midwives who actually went to nursing school. They've um, gotten their nursing degrees and then they went to master, uh, mass, uh, graduate school to get their master's degrees to become a certified midwife. And they have similar scope of practice as a physician um, outside of surgery. And so that's really what the bigger difference is between that diverse group of all of these practitioners. Depending on what law, depending on what state you're in, the laws vary depending on who can do what based off of their scope. Sometimes in some states, the CPMs have more freedom and flexibilities, whereas like in North Carolina, CNMs have more freedom and flexibilities to do this work. In fact, CPMs can't even legally practice here in North Carolina. Introducing mobilizing African-American women through empowerment. 